I'd like to welcome everyone to the now 11 o'clock service here at Grace Tabernacle Baptist Church. We'd like to welcome all of our individuals who are watching via Facebook this morning. God bless you. Thank you very much for joining us. We are also streaming on Instagram as well. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we just want to rejoice and be glad in it. It is Resurrection Day, the 12th day of April, 2020, the most important day on the Christian calendar because it was on this day more than 2,000 years ago that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ got up from the grave and because he lives, we too are given the promise of eternal life. God bless you. Thank you very much. We just want to praise the Lord today and glorify his name. And we're going to begin with some music. Brother Gary Constant has a song for us right now. Be blessed. And once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning.
Amen, amen. Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Happy Resurrection Day. The tomb is empty, for he has risen. May you feel his presence this Easter Sunday morning. He has risen. Let us prepare our hearts now for prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this day. You woke us up and started us on our way with a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. May our hearts overflow with joy at your resurrection. May our joy be an invitation for others to come and see the empty tomb. Today, we celebrate how you overcame death. You were crucified. You were buried. But you rose again on that third day with all power in your hand. And because you live, we can face tomorrow, no matter what tomorrow brings. So pray, I pray, that your Holy Spirit will just touch each and every person within the sound of my voice. Touch our pastor, who will be bringing forth the message this morning. May those who are listening and watching remotely, mainly because of the coronavirus, may you also feel the touch of our Heavenly Father. Help us to take things one day at a time, knowing that you have everything in control. We trust in you. We believe in you. We have faith in you. Hear our prayers. Heal our land. Touch our sick. Touch our shut-in. Touch those that are homeless and hungry. Heavenly Father, we know you're in control of this COVID-19. And because of that, help us as we think of this disease. We hear on a daily basis all the negative, the statistics. We hear the deaths and we hear the promises of reaching a curve and coming down. But I'd like for us to think about COVID in a positive manner today. I'd like for us, when we take the COVID, to think about Christ over viruses and infectious diseases. Christ over viruses and infectious diseases. And think about the 19 as Joshua 1.9. And that reads, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Heavenly Father, as we come before you this day, as we come and we give you thanks and praise, for your son took our sins and went to the cross and died and shed his blood for us, so that we may boldly come to the throne of grace. On this resurrection day, Lord, we just give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. And for his sake, amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Luke, 24th chapter. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 8. And I will be reading from the new, I'm sorry, I'll be reading from the New King James Version this morning. That's Luke 24, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, 
that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his word. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. A song now from Maria Daniels. I will sing your praise for you've done such a marvelous thing for someone so wretched yet my soul you have redeemed no one else could do it no one could care half as much but you thought my soul was worth it. Mm -hmm. So you gave your only son. You gave that I might live You gave That I could stand here And say that I'm free Exchange your life for mine What a marvelous thing You've done Cause some folks see my faults But Lord you see my accomplishments Even the good work you have begun in me You also see my finish Cause no, not half done All the battles already won So I can't help but praise you, Lord For the marvelous things you've done You You gave that I could be free today. Thank you, Lord. Even exchange your perfect life for my dirty life. I thank you, Lord, today. What a wonderful thing you've done. Lord, thank you. I'm grateful today that you gave. That we could be free. This is the day you gave. Your life for my life. Thank you. 
What a wonderful thing. Thing. Oh, what a marvelous thing, a marvelous thing you've done. When you saved me, Lord, that was marvelous. You rearranged me, that was marvelous. Then you broke the chains that had me bound, and you planted my feet, Lord. Back on solid ground Say yes Yes to your will and way Say oh, 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 oh Lord, you're marvelous Then you died for me To set me free then you conquered the grave Then you rose for me Say yeah Oh, you're marvelous Say oh, 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 oh Lord, you're marvelous Say yeah But grateful, Lord, that you died for us. What a wonderful thing. Oh, what a glorious, glorious, glorious thing. Thank you, Lord, what a marvelous thing. What a marvelous thing you've done. Amen, amen, amen. His name is marvelous. His name is wonderful. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the great I am. I'm talking about my God and your King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to do communion now and ask the ministers to come forward. Amen. We've been talking about this for a while here at Grace. We want to do a virtual communion. And this is the first time we've ever, you know, there's a lot of firsts as we are dealing with this coronavirus. And this is the first time we've had a virtual communion. Amen. Here at Grace, we offer communion to all baptized believers, and I'm hoping that you at home will take this opportunity to get your crackers or your bread and your cup of juice, and you will join us as we celebrate communion on this Easter Sunday morning. Amen. Celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that on the night he was betrayed, Savior Jesus Christ celebrated the Passover meal in the upper room and he said we should do this in remembrance of him I want everyone to join us right now as we recognize the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior as we break bread together. Amen. Amen. As we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun.
Bible tells us that on that evening, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. Likewise, our Lord and Savior took the cup. He says, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. The Bible says, after that, they said a prayer and went out into the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you allowed yourself to be nailed to the cross for the forgiveness of sin. Because of your shed blood, our sins are forgiven, washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. But Father, on this Sunday morning, we thank you for getting up from the grave. And we know because you live, because you were resurrected through the power of the living God, that we too will have eternal life if we give ourselves to you. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the fact you love us with an everlasting love. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to be blessed now with another song from our songstress of the morning, Maria Daniels. Praise God. finished he said we had watched as his life ebbed away then we all stood around till the guards took him down Joseph begged for his body that day it was late afternoon when we got to the tomb, wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. So I know how you feel. His death was so real. But please listen and hear what I say. I've just seen. Jesus, I tell you he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord's alive. And then I knew I knew he really saw me too And it was as if till now I've never lived And all that I've done before I've just seen Jesus And I'll never be the same again It 
it was his voice that I heard those kind, gentle words asking what was the reason for tears. And I sobbed in despair, my Lord is not there. He said, child, it is I, I am here, Jesus. Our precious Lord is alive. And then I knew, I knew he really saw me too. And it was as if till now I've never. And everything that I've done before, my past doesn't matter anymore. I've just seen Jesus. I've just seen Jesus. I've just seen. Jesus and all I've ever done before he doesn't hold it against me anymore I've just seen our Savior I've just seen Jesus I'll never be the same again I've just seen, just seen Jesus. Amen, amen. At home this morning, just, just say to yourself, or say to your family, thank you, Jesus. Just say, thank you, Jesus. We thank him for what he has done for us. We thank him for his sacrifice. We thank him that because of him, we have the promise of eternal life. Our scripture this morning has already been read, but I'm going to read it again as we head into this morning's message. Our scripture coming from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. May the Lord add a very, very special blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the internalization of his holy word. He is not here. He has risen. He is not here. He has risen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Easter Sunday morning, on this resurrection day, on this the most important day on the Christian calendar, I'd like to preach uh, from the subject, the great comeback. The great comeback. If you're anything like me, you love a comeback story. As a matter of fact, I don't know of anybody who does not like a comeback story. When you're down and out, all seems lost, and miraculously, you make a comeback. 
when you're buried by your circumstances and you are seemingly resurrected from the dead. It's a miracle. But in reality, it's God. What it is, is the great comeback. I want to give you some examples. Starting in the secular world. Five years before publishing one of the most influential books of the 21st century, a woman by the name of J.K. Rowling was living on welfare, struggling as a single mother. She wrote her first book while working at night as a teacher. But that particular manuscript was rejected 12 times by publishers. When Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was finally published, Rowling was told, that's all right, but don't quit your day job. Well, today, more than 450 million Harry Potter books have been sold all around the world. J.K. Rowling buried by rejection. Her dream resurrected by the power of persistence. It was the great comeback. Here's another one. Before launching an empire that includes resorts and theme parks, film and television studios, retail stores, and a whole lot more. A man by the name of Walt Disney launched his first animated film company. The year was 1921. Had limited success, but ultimately he was forced to go into bankruptcy. It took this man, Disney, several other failures before finally becoming a success. Even Mickey Mouse and Snow White were dogged and dismissed by critics until Disney proved them wrong. Walt Disney, buried by bankruptcy, but resurrected by the God-given gift of imagination. It was the great comeback. How many of you out there have an iPhone or an iPad or perhaps an iWatch? Well, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was actually fired from the company he helped to create. Long before the launch of any of the current Apple products, when the company was headed for financial ruin, buried in an avalanche of debt, he was fired. But eventually he rejoined the company, shaking up the industry by introducing game-changing technology, starting with the Macintosh computer, the Mac computer. The rest, as they say, is history. Steve Jobs, buried by rejection. Resurrected by the opening of a closed door. It was the great comeback. I want to take you to the world of sports right now because I am a big sports fan. Before becoming one of the greatest basketball players of all time, a man by the name of Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. He was only a sophomore. His hopes of, of playing in, on the basketball team and, and, and even eventually getting to the NBA were buried. But according to Jordan, failure was part of his eventual success. This basketball Hall of Famer won six NBA titles with the Chicago Bulls, was voted the most viable player of the league five times. And this is what he said. He said, I've missed 9,000 shots in my career. And I've lost almost 300 games. I have failed over and over again. That's why I succeed. My friends, failure is never fatal unless you stop trying. Michael Jordan, buried by failure, resurrected by drive and determination. It was the great comeback. And who can forget the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers? Down three games to one against the team with the best regular season record in NBA history. No team had ever come back from a 3-1 deficit. It seemed the Cavaliers were dead and buried, especially when you consider the seventh and final game was on the home court of the San Francisco Warriors. I should say Golden State Warriors. But you know the story. Love's defense. LeBron's block. And Kyrie's shot propelled the Cavaliers to their first and only NBA championship, the first Cleveland championship in 15 years. The Cavaliers, 
buried by the odds against them, but resurrected by a dream that finally came true. It was the great comeback. Since this is Easter Sunday, and since I am a preacher, and since this is church, we want to go to the Word of God this morning. Consider the man named David. Hard to believe that this biblical giant, this man after God's own heart, Israel's greatest king, actually broke half of God's Ten Commandments with one set of circumstances. As you know, you've heard the story. Uh, there was a woman bathing on the rooftop, and David happened to walk out on his rooftop, and he saw this beautiful woman bathing. The Bible said David lusted after Bathsheba, but there was only one problem. She was the wife of David's military commander. He lusted after Bathsheba, sin number one. Then he committed adultery with her. That's sin number two. Effectively stealing her from his military leader, Uriah, sin number three. Then lying to Uriah, sin number four. And eventually having the man murdered on the battlefield. That's sin number five. Then when the prophet Nathan confronts David about his actions and he gives him an example of similar behavior, the prophet ends by saying, you are that man. But here's what David did. He immediately confessed and he repented. My friends, that's the bottom line. We need, when we're caught in sin, we need to confess and repent. Ask for forgiveness and repent. David buried in a grave of sin, but resurrected by God's grace for further use in the kingdom. My friends, that's me and you, amen. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But even though we're a sinner saved by grace, God can still use us for his good. The great comeback. Before David, there was a man named Elijah. Elijah was one of Israel's greatest prophets. And because of that, because of he had contact with God, because he was in communication with God, you would think he had unshakable faith. After all, he, he prayed to the Lord and, it, and the rain stopped for three years. He was hungry and God sent ravens to feed him. He prayed and, and a widow's life came back to life, praise God. And he defeated the prophets of Baal by calling down fire from heaven. God was definitely on his side. But when King Ahab and Jezebel vowed to kill him, all of a sudden this man of God was fearful. And he fled to the wilderness, hiding from his enemies. Elijah buried in an avalanche of fear and doubt. But here's the good news. God resurrected him by speaking to him in that still, small voice. And he continued to serve the Lord before being taken to heaven in a chariot of fire. It was the great comeback. I'm going to take you to the New Testament now. John Mark. John Mark wrote the book of Mark, the first book of the gospel, the first, the earliest book of the gospel. It's the same John Mark who accompanied Paul and Barnabas on one of their early missionary journeys. But suddenly John Mark abandons them saying, basically, this is too hard. Enough is enough. I'm out of here. Essentially, when the going got tough, John Mark said, I'm done. Well, obviously, Paul was angered and he was devastated. He really, really had a hard time forgiving John Mark for what he had done. And later when Barnabas, his, his, his fellow missionary, came to him and suggested that they rejoin with John Mark, uh, Paul was still angry and he refused to do so. But here's the good news. Many years later, when Paul was sitting in a Roman jail awaiting trial, guess who's with him? John Mark. He was with him. And Paul calls him a great comfort. This man who deeply disappointed Paul was now a trusted companion. 
This man who called division within the body of Christ was now called a fellow worker. John Mark buried by the immaturity of youth, but resurrected through the power of forgiveness. It was the great comeback. And then there's the apostle Paul. The great apostle Paul, but before he came, uh, became the writer of, 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 of most of the books of the New Testament, he was known as Paul, or I should say Saul of Tarsus. He was a terror to the early church. Nobody wanted to ever see him coming. Not only was he there, there when Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was killed, he was actually standing there holding their cloaks, and he was approving of the murder. Later, Acts 9 tells us that Paul actually went door to door in Jerusalem looking for Christ's followers. Why? Because he wanted to throw them into prison. Then on another mission to hunt down Christians, he meets our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on that Damascus road. The Bible says suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and Paul fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? From that time on, Saul, then Paul, became a dedicated apostle, a man who would eventually become the apostle to the Gentiles, a man who would ultimately give his life for the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul, buried by a life of violent opposition to Jesus, resurrected by that same Jesus who appeared to him on that Damascus road. It was the great comeback. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, undoubtedly, the greatest comeback of all time, the comeback that shook up the world, happened on this day more than 2,000 years ago. You know the story. Early one Sunday morning, Jesus pulled off the ultimate comeback. Beaten and bloody, despised and spat upon, demeaned and humiliated, a crown of thorns smashed on his head. This was Good Friday. Jesus nailed to the old rugged cross, a spear piercing in his side. It was a penalty normally reserved for, for slaves and, and foreigners and, and criminals. Surely not the son of the living God. Bible says that he hung there for six hours before crying out, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And then he hung his head and said, it is finished. They pulled him down, buried him in a borrowed tomb. But here's the good news. And this is why we celebrate this day. Because three days later, he got up from the grave, got up with all power. Got up with all glory, got up with all majesty. I'm talking about my God and your king. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Day. That's why we celebrate Easter Sunday. I just stopped by to tell you it ain't about the Easter Bunny. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's about the great eye. It's about Jesus. That's why we praise him. Crucified. And buried on Friday, but resurrected by the power of the living God early one Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but that's why I love him. That's why I glorify him. That's why I lift him up, because he's my God. He's my king. He's my everything. That is why we celebrate Resurrection Day. It is the greatest day on the Christian calendar. It is the greatest comeback. The greatest comeback. My brothers and sisters in Christ, here's the takeaway. The resurrection gives all believers the promise of eternal life. And we praise God for that. But that's not all. I just want to let you know there's power in the resurrection. That's why if you make Jesus first place in your life, if you keep your hand in God's hand, our Heavenly Father can resurrect your hopes. If you keep your hand in God's hand, make Jesus first place in your life, our Heavenly Father can resurrect your broken dreams. If you keep Jesus first place 
keep your hand in God's hand. Our Heavenly Father can resurrect broken relationships. But that's not all. God is so powerful. He can resurrect your finances. And if you're sick and dealing with a disease, if, 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 if you believe in God, he can resurrect your body and bring you back to health. Why? Because there is power. Holy Ghost power in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nothing is too hard for God. Finally, as I was studying for today's message, God gave me this reality. I asked the question, Lord, how can we resurrect our situations? We're going through a lot right now. Coronavirus, people laid off, fear gripping the land. How can we resurrect our situation? How can we as a people and as individuals achieve the great comeback. And, and God told me through his Holy Spirit that we do that by glorifying him, by glorifying him. With that in mind, I want to break down the word glory, making it an action word. I want to break down the word glory. The first letter is G, which st simply stands for go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. My friends, prayer is the greatest power in the universe. And our Heavenly Father hears and answers prayer. In, indeed, the Bible says the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth month. Understand that none of us are righteous by ourselves. Amen. Our righteousness, as the Bible says, like filthy rags. But because we give our life to Christ, the righteousness of Christ then comes to us. We're righteous because of what Jesus did on the cross. We're righteous because of what Jesus did on this day 2,000 years ago. We're righteous because of the resurrection. And because of that, God hears and answers prayer. It's like the old folks used to say. You know, he, he may not come when I want him, but he's always right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The first letter in the word glory is go to God in prayer. The next letter is L. And that stands for listening to that still, small voice. Listening to that still, small voice. Once we go to God in prayer, we need to shut up and listen to what God is saying. Sometimes we talk too much. Amen. Amen. We go to God in prayer and we do all the talk. And every now and then we have to listen to what God is saying to us. And he often speaks to us in the silence. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio. Shut down social media and get one-on-one -on -one with God. Sometimes he speaks to us in the silence. But he also speaks to us in dreams in visions, through the word of God. Sometimes God will speak to you through another person. And oftentimes he speaks to us in that still, small voice. Indeed, the psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. L, listen to that still, small voice. The next letter in the word glory is O, which means offer praise and thanksgiving. Somebody said when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Somebody else said that praise is a way of taking back territory from the enemy. I don't know about you, but, but, but what I'm, I'm going through something. I just want to praise God because I know if I praise him some way, he's going to make a way out of no way. Praise, my friends, is a way of honoring God because the God that I serve and the God that you serve is worthy of all of our praises. Offering praise. Meanwhile, offering thanksgiving is, is, is just being thankful. Being thankful what, for what God has done. Being thankful for what he's doing now. Amen. Being thankful for, for what he's going to do. And understand that the best is yet to come. We just got to be thankful. Oh, offering up praise and thanksgiving. 
All right, the next letter in the word glory is R. And that simply stands for rest in the Lord. My friends, once you go to God in prayer, once you've listened to that still small voice, and once you've offered up praise and thanksgiving, all you got to do is rest in the comfort of the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Rest means to wait peacefully. Indeed, Psalms 37 and 7 says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. Sometimes we get too anxious, amen? But we just relax and know that God is going to work. When you've gone to the throne of grace and you've laid your cares before the Lord, know that he's going to work it out. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. Then I want to go to Exodus thirty-three fourteen, 14, where, where the Lord says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. And watch him work a miracle in your life. The final letter in the word glory is the letter Y. And that simply means say yes to God's will. You got to say yeah. Say yes to God's will. Uh, my friends, once you go to God in prayer... And you've listened to what God is saying. And you've offered up your praise and thanksgiving. And after you just rest in the Lord, you have to say yes to his will. You know, God may be telling you to do something right now. He may be telling you to be a better father, a better mother. May be telling you to be a better student in school. He may be telling you to be a better Christian. He may be telling you to be more loving, more forgiving. He may be telling you to show more grace and mercy. He may be telling you that he wants you... To give your life to him. And understand whatever God tells you is always going to be in line with his will. Amen. It's going to always be in line with the word of God. That's why it's important to to read the word of God so you can understand what thus saith the Lord. Because when God speaks to you, oftentimes he's going to speak to you through his word. So if God is telling you to do something on this Easter Sunday morning, you need to do it. You need to do it. And I'm going to tell you something. Oftentimes when God tells us to do something, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing to do because it takes us out of our comfort zone. You know, oh my gosh. It's, it, you know, it's, it's something that goes against our human nature, our fleshy nature. It goes against our ego. It takes us out of that comfort zone. But understand that if the Holy Spirit is residing in you, you can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to kind of be like Peter. We, 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 we got to step out on faith. You know the story. Peter, Peter is, sees Jesus walking on the water. And Peter says, Lord, can I come to you? And the Lord said, come. Peter gets out the, the boat and starts walking on the water. Amen. But here's the thing that Peter didn't do. He didn't keep his eyes on Jesus. My friends, when you step out on faith, when you say yes to God's will, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because if you keep your eyes on Jesus, he'll give you that strength that you need to go through the storm. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is what I want you to understand this morning. You and Jesus, I said you and Jesus are a winning combination. When you give your life to Christ, you're on the winning side. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're on the winning side. My friends, understand that when you give your life to Christ and when you call on him and he rests in his word, you are going to be okay. Don't worry about what's going on around you. You're going to be okay because God is waiting to perform a miracle in your life. All you got to do is trust him. That's all you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is, is, is put your life in his hands. All you got to do is, is, is put Jesus in the drivers. Tell Jesus, Jesus, you drive. I'm going to ride shotgun. All you got to do is, is what Jesus said in the garden. Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Then and only then will you feel his resurrection power. Then and only then will you experience the great comeback. It is the greatest story ever told. It is the story that shook up the world. It is the story that gives all of us the promise of eternal life. 
It is the story of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Happy Resurrection Day. To God be the glory. Here now is a closing video. Encouragement during this time of uncertainty. someone who is watching via Facebook this morning who has not given their life to Christ and we want to give you that opportunity right now. We want you to be able to enjoy eternal life with him because he lives we too can live eternally in the presence of our Heavenly Father. If in fact you have not given your life to Christ I would just ask you to bow your head and pray this prayer after me. All you have to do is say, Father, forgive me for every sin I have sinned against you. I ask you now to come into my life and save me. Make me the person you would have me to be. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and giving me eternal life. I believe in your birth, your death, and your resurrection. I just want to serve you and give my life to you. My friends, if you prayed that prayer, welcome into the family of the living God. For you, Easter Sunday is Resurrection Day. For you, Easter Sunday is just not about the Easter bunny and the candy. It's about the gift given to us by our Lord and Savior. The gift of eternal life if we've given our life to him. God bless you. A closing prayer now from Reverend Andre Barkley. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the message that's been brought forth, Lord. Father, during this time, Lord, help us to remember, Lord, what you've done, Lord. So we just thank you. Father, we just ask you right now that you would touch each and every individual, Lord, who needs to hear from you. Let them hear a small voice from you right now in Jesus' name. Let them know, Lord, that let them know that all they have to do is trust in you. So we ask you, Lord, that you would just touch each and every individual right now, Lord, Father. Bring rest in their souls right now. Bring peace in their souls right now. But let them know, Lord, that they can be encouraged through you. So we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory on this day. And let us know that this day is the important day, Lord, for what you have done. So we give you praise and honor right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Happy Resurrection Day. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.